This is the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcast, where we talk with martial arts practitioners about their histories and the influence their practice of martial arts has on their lives. You are listening to the free version of this podcast, which is abbreviated. Help support this program by considering to subscribe to us on Patreon and access the full-length version of the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcasts, all for the price of one coffee shop coffee per month. Go to www.patreon.com slash malmag. That's www.patreon.com slash M-A-L-M-A-G. This week, I catch up with my old friend, Chicago martial artist Marcus Charles on Zoom. We talk about his history, training with the legendary Larry Hartzell, training through different challenges, and just putting in the training time. Sit back and enjoy this conversation with Marcus Charles. Welcome to the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcast. And today, I've got actually one of my oldest martial art friends here, uh, at least in the Inosanto and Hartzell family is concerned. Uh, this is Marcus Charles out of Chicago. Welcome, Marcus. Hey, welcome, Tim. Thank you for having me on. It's awesome. Uh, Brad Penn, the new magazine uh, online. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah. Glad that you're having a look at it and uh, threatening to write something for me sometime. I, <laughs> yes, I'll get it out there as soon as I, I will, for sure. It's on the so, list. Certainly appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, well, God, where to start with you? I mean, God, we've known each other, um, shoot, the better part of 18 years almost. Probably. Um, yeah. And, yeah. You know, I uh, met you when I came out and did, uh, I was training with Sifu Larry and you were there. And um, yeah, that's when I met. That was the, I still got a picture. I was trying to find it. It's in a big frame and it's got the old mats from the old academy where it had the yellow oh. line, black. Remember that? Yeah, that's the stuff upstairs. Yeah, because I mean, downstairs was all concrete floor at the time. And then, yeah, yeah. That, old, that old wrestling mat. And then that upstairs room was actually two rooms. Mm -hmm. at the time too yeah that was that was some interesting times because you could have like uh two classes going on upstairs and a class going on downstairs and sometimes even i saw that downstairs divided into two so i think oh. i've seen four things going on at the same time <laughs> before a <laughs> long time yeah. ago yeah yeah for sure yeah that's when i think yeah that's when we uh that's when i first met you and then i didn't realize you're from illinois yeah yeah, yeah. A little bit over to the west uh, of Chicago, but um, but yeah, Illinois. I mean, close enough, two hours away. Yeah, yeah. We've been through. Uh, it was kind of a uh, a whirlwind because um, you know we started. We, I met you, and I started training with Sifu Larry at the, the last you know part of his life, really. Um, yeah. You know, and uh, I remember a lot of the stuff. It's it's interesting with him was that the we did a lot of knife work. I remember. Yeah, you know, that is one thing I think, you know, when you have the media presence, so so sort of the, the media presence of Larry Hartzell and the uh, image that people have is a little different than the whole thing that he did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I think if you train with him, you start said, well, wait, this guy's really good at Kali, weaponry, yeah. uh, as well as the MP man, and this guy's really good at boxing. And he's really good at these other areas that, you know, people are like, oh, he was a grappler or he was a trapping guy. And you're like, well, yeah, but <laughs> there's a lot more there. Right, right. Which was, I thought was really cool because when the, when we uh, did all the knife work and um, it just, it, it was just, and then we just went down like a list of stuff. I remember my, my training partner I had with me at the time, Augie, he wrote down like, there was like 85 different knife disarms and drills and techniques that we did and he just i just remember he just here's one here's two here's three here's <laughs> lines it was just phenomenal how he just knew it offhand it was really cool very yeah. cool indeed yeah and it's i mean it's interesting being you know you and i are the same we kind of came into training with larry hartzell um you know where the, everyone thinks of jake you know the the premier jkd fighter uh guy i mean not to say that he couldn't kick someone's ass on reno i'm certainly yeah. good but yeah that wasn't his aura he was more the scholar and the the yeah. old teacher at that point and uh so it was a like a same but yet different larry hartzell that we trained mm -hmm. with i mean it wasn't like we were going to go to the bar with him after training and kick the shit out of 15 20 people you know but <laughs> Right, right which is okay not my speed anyway yeah right right yeah that's uh 
that stuff kind of went out back in the nineties kind of, I think, but, um, well, nowadays you can't really, you can't really do much of anything. Everybody's recording and, you know, uh, you can't really, you know, so a lot of people have, um, they say a lot more than they usually would because they know things aren't going to happen. I mean, you even have it on the internet, you know, before it'd be emails. Now you have, you could put something up and then you can get into a Facebook, you know, frenzy within. Oh, sure. Was it the chat rooms and the blog type stuff of the past is now just, yeah. so, yeah, you know. Everybody could see it. You know what I mean? It's, if you're on yeah. Facebook, everybody could see it and you get these threads and, um, but it is what it is. That's just the way things go. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an entertaining thing. It's just like, you know, um, with this stuff and, and it, it's a good conversation. I think you and I talk about it quite a bit. It's just like mm -hmm. martial arts you would think would bring about a level of maturity in people and, you know, what you see basically with a combination of that martial art kind of thing and social media, the access that everyone has to basically just saying something, you know, and it being treated fairly equal to everyone else's, you know, just to have the, the ability to just basically be a pigeon just coming crap on everything and strut mm -hmm. around. And yeah, without any, uh, and, th and then there's no, the only repercussion is just saying something back and then you get into that, you know, that, that negative cycle, which usually what I do is if, set, if that happens on my, if I put something up and there's something said that I even have a glitch that it may be negative, I just delete it and I may say, you know, I, I go to the chat and say, hey, look, man, if you got something to say, we talk about it on here, you know, but let's not, you know, air it out in front of everybody. And then if I still don't get anything, I just block the person. It's just not worth the um, the battle yeah, for me. And again, I think if it does, it starts getting real nasty like that. It's, it's better because then, you know, you're not wasting your time anymore. They're mm -hmm. not wasting their time, even if that's what they're getting off on. You know, they can move on to the next one. Um, you know, for me, I, I, I tend to just try to ask people for some evidence and some credentials because, mm -hmm. you know, everyone's like, oh, I have a right to my opinion. Sure you do. But yeah. it's not worth a damn to me unless it's qualified i mean and even so my, it, yeah you get people that just seem like they feel they gotta say something right you know feel like they need to say something and you know even if you, you just give a like give a thumbs up or just give you know smiley face or whatever if you feel like you need to say something you know right. i mean what what purpose are you are you are you really looking for the truth you know are you <laughs> really that interested in is this true did this happen or uh will that work that's the famous one. Oh, that won't work uh, that's a, um or are you just looking for an argument because you feel safe enough to argue or there's not going to be any kind of anything you're in your house and you know it's nice and warm and drinking your coffee and you're just firing stuff up you know i i, I don't know what changed I, i'm not saying i never was like that i never was like that on the internet necessarily but um, I don't know what changed with me, but as time went on over the years, it just seems like that that energy just is better served in, you know, training and, and writing curriculum and, you know, stuff like that instead of uh, trying to prove a point. I think what changes you got old like me. But that, <laughs> that's positive. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that doesn't that always adds. Flavor, yeah. yeah, I think we understand the value of time at that point. It's like, do, do I want to take my time and, and you know, uh, try to get carpal tunnel typing all this nonsense to someone? Or do I want to get in the gym around people I actually like being around and doing something that's beneficial? And I think, you know, as we get older, we probably choose B, hopefully. Yeah, More. hopefully. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, you know, there's always that um, the thing of what I what I took away from one of the things I took away from C. Larry was his no matter how bad he was feeling, he still found time to train. That was his. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, if 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 he's going through what he was going through and he's still able to train and, you know, and do it, meaning like mentally do as much as he can right. keep what we're doing. You know, all these other things that happen in life are just kind of, you know, push them to the side. I mean, and, and there's a number of examples, I think, you know, that I, I myself have tried to, you know, emulate with that. And I think um, you got Greg Nelson, um, oh, yeah. you know, uh, um, Arjun Chai is always talking about, you know, keep going, keep going, right. you know, that phrase. 
And, you know, and then I brought up Stallone earlier. It's like, keep punching, you know, that's his thing. Yeah. And um, I think that no matter what adversity we have, I think, you know, we need to, if we really want to do something, you can't let things, you know, derail you. It happens. I yeah. mean, you get derailed for a second, then you're right back on. You know, it happens. Um, but I think we can get caught up in, to swing back what we're talking about with the with the social media, we can get caught up in these that, that loop of having to respond. And then you feel like, hey, you know, I'm a martial artist. And then it's like, well, where's my space? Should I let this person get away with this, that type of thing? And well, what's he getting away with? Or she or whoever, what are they really getting away with? Yeah, and in the end, are they, are they stopping your students from coming in the door? Are they stopping yeah. training partners from training with you? No. Uh, they're giving like-minded people something to laugh at, like, you know, uh, mumbly from the old cartoon or something like, <laughs> you yeah. know, for 30 seconds. And then they're, they're on to the next thing. You know, they're just, uh, you know, really the, the thing you want to get through is get past the emotional attachment mm -hmm. to it, get past the, the, the shot at the ego, which is, you know, a human thing. It's natural to have that and just go, you know, understand they're inconsequential to sort of the larger picture of what you're doing. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I think that that once you, you come to that realization, you know, there's a lot of stuff that you realize, man, no wonder why I was so exhausted. No wonder why, you know, because yeah. it's like, you know, it, it, it's not fulfilling to sit there and, you know, prove a point necessarily, you know, I mean, you know, it's to me, I mean, other people like doing it. They get odd. They, I don't want to say the word get off on it, but that's their fuel. They love. Yeah. Well, they get off on it. Yeah. I yeah. think it's a description. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know how, how clean we're going to be on this, but <laughs> yeah. So, um, but yeah, um, those are the things I think I've, as, as time goes on, I've learned and, um, you know, tried to take away from, I mean, obviously physical skill from all the different instructors that I've had and you've had, we have similar ones. I mean, that's, those are all givens, I think. Right. Um, but see, for Larry, the main one main thing, especially is that uh, as far as physical was just getting me into boxing. I mean, it, it's just such a, you know, it's funny with JKD because it's like I've had all these different instructors and, you know, the one main, their one main route is Guru Dan, right? But, right. you know, uh, Sensei Paulson, Rick Fay, Greg Nelson, whoever, I'm not, you know, uh, obviously see for Larry and uh, just about anybody else. Um, but their JKD all looks different. Yes. It's a whole different thing. It's like you wouldn't even know necessarily unless you talk to them that they could be, there's some, you know, uh, there's a common ground there. Right. Yeah. If you knew, yeah, I guess, I mean, if you know them and you know the history of the common ground. Now, there's, an, I, I don't know if you've ever kind of been around when, when Guru Dan has told the story of, of, and I don't know who it was. I don't think he identified uh, anyone who ever tries to insult him. He just usually says, you know, someone was saying, hey, you know, why is it that Larry Hartzell, Eric Paulson, Richard Bastillo, all these people you've trained, Jerry Petit, whatever, they don't look the same. And mm -hmm. they said it, Guru said, they said it in this way that was supposed to be an insult. And he's like, well, thank you. That's what they should be doing. They should look yeah. different. They should, yeah. you know, yeah, just like, that's kind of funny. I, I love that answer. It's a great answer. Yeah, and I, I, that's the, the one thing I like with Guru Dan is it seems like no matter what, there's always, he, he seems to find some positive. <laughs> yes, positive that's, that's an amazing ability, yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no matter what it is, it just like, like something like that, which it sounds like, like you said, the person was trying to angle it as a, as a, as a dig, and he took it as a compliment, which it actually is a compliment, because that's, you know, I, you know um, that's cool. That is quite, cool. I've never heard him say that, but that's awesome that he did. <laughs> yeah, I just, because I've already, you know, tell that story probably four or five times and I, you know, I forget the context other than it's, you know, him teaching. Yeah. And I, so I forget sometimes whether it's a seminar and there's people there or camp or mm -hmm. this class or what, but yeah, uh, it's, it's one that I love, but, um, well, cool. Let's go back in time a little bit. Let's, let's go back to when you started martial arts and, and what you got, uh, what, got you into it, what you started with, that sort of thing? Um, I, I started, I, I wasn't really into anything until pretty much like fitness kind of kicked in right around high school. I played football a little bit in high school, but, but it was like a fitness thing. So I started lifting a lot 
And um, I liked lifting. I wasn't a bodybuilder necessarily. I just wanted to lift weights and get stronger. You know, I'd sit there and get every single bodybuilding magazine, Muscle and Fitness, Iron Man, and whatever. So I would just buy them every every month when they'd come out. And mm-hmm. then, honestly, I mean, this is going to sound like a cliche because a lot of people have used this example, but I actually am one of the few who this actually happened to. Um, I was reading a Muscle Fitness article that Schwarzenegger, and I'll never forget the magazine. It's got Schwarzenegger on the cover, and there's a little caption of Bruce Lee on the bottom. There's a little box with a picture of Bruce Lee. Oh, I remember this in the 80s, right? I remember yes. this. Yeah, I remember yep. that. I remember him mentioning, talking about Bruce Lee's abs. And he was saying what kind of great shape he was in. He just gave him all these compliments. And I was like, oh, cool. But I never knew anything about JKD or, you know, any of that stuff. And then I started hunting around a little bit in uh, where I live in the South side of Chicago. But I, there really wasn't anything related to Bruce Lee at Taekwondo schools uh, yet. And then I did go to another school. Um, I won't mention the style, just out of respect, but it didn't do much. This was, um, um, it, it, it didn't do anything for me. It just, uh, yeah, again, I was a big, bulky, strong guy and the guy did whatever movie was trying to do. If somebody like, you know, does the old thing behind your back and you spin out of it type of thing. He's like, Oh, you can't, it just wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't impress me, put it that yeah. way. You know, it's uh, when we describe things like that. Uh, people that are in particular styles seem to get upset. And, and I think, you know, people should not, you know, not all arts and methods are necessarily designed for all physical types. And that's kind of one of the things that we understand mm-hmm. in JKD. Yeah. And that's kind of what we're going after. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, you're, you're, you're saying that, and that, you know, I think it's, you know, I appreciate that you're leaving the, the, the name out just so it doesn't, cause a problem but, you know yeah I, I don't even know if that place you're not saying the bad art you're just saying it, it wasn't good for you well I, for at the time i didn't know anything about the art about any art really so it's just like it just didn't whatever now i think if i was to explore it now knowing what i know i think i would find uh in all honesty um a lot of that particular art a lot of our older instructors actually trained in it at one point. Um, oh, sure. Yeah, well, so it, it, you've learned it, a different lens to look things. Look yeah, things. exactly. Um, and that guy could have been having a bad day. Maybe he was just somebody, he wasn't even the head instructor. So he was just a, a student who happened to whatever. So, but anyways, regardless of that. So then um, uh, in co- when I went to junior college, uh, initially, uh, after I got out of the service, I ran into my very first instructor and his name was Dan Ricardo. And he, at that time, I was at my pinnacle in, in the weightlifting era. I had the, t- the hot pink T. Michael shirts. You remember those? Yeah. And all tanned up with those big, I forgot what kind of pants those were called, the clown pants or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> the forerunners to the, uh, what's his face, um, MC Hammer pants kind of. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Wearing the wrestling shoes, even though I didn't wrestle <laughs> at the time. You know. <laughs> Oh, whatever. I'll tanned up. So I, the guy, he come up and asked me if I worked out. And I told him, yeah. And we just started talking and he was telling me he did, you know, JKD and Kali. And I was like, okay, what is that? I didn't know anything about it. I go, JKD, isn't that like Bruce Lee's, you know, thing? He's like, yeah. And he explained Kali and all that. I'm like, okay. And I just told him my experience, like I told you initially. And then uh, we went to the gym and he wanted me to just throw a swing at him. And to make a long story short, I did. And he did the gun thing on the bicep, on my bicep, which at mm-hmm. that time, you know, decent size. And uh, I was sold because literally for a second, my arm, you know, you know, that feeling, it just goes down. Um, and um, I remember I went to uh, meet him at the American Martial Arts Academy. Um, that was the name of it at the time. And the very first, very first Kali class I took, because I was waiting for Deanna to come in, was with Ron Balicki. He was teaching yeah. that he was teaching that class at the time. Um, and he said to come on in. I told him I was waiting for Deanne, et cetera. And then um, and then Deanne came and then we did a private because we used to train uh at that time because we were younger and we didn't need jobs or anything like that. So we trained at, <laughs> we trained from 10 uh from 10 to 12 every day at night, meaning 10 at 10 p.m. to 12 
p.m. Uh, a.m. and then we'd go to a restaurant called Mother's Mother's Day, and we'd eat there. And we did that for a number of years, a year, maybe two years. We just that's how we trained, and we just did everything. And um, so I I fell in love with it at that point. I mean, I I, I switched from a guy who, who a weightlifter who does martial arts to a martial artist who every once in a blue moon picks up a weight every once in a while now. <laughs> that, that was around 89 or 90. I can't remember the exact date. And then that, that's when I was introduced to, I think Edgar Saluti had been there at one point, I think, I can't remember. But then I started going to these seminars at Dagerberg and I never heard of Dagerberg or anything like that. And that's when I met, I was there, I seen Arjun Chai, uh, Guru Dan, uh, I seen for the first time. Um, and I was just, I remember, especially with Guru Dan, it was just like, you know, back then, especially just the overload of, of information. And I was just like, you know, I, I got done. I felt like I just got done with my ACTs, you know. Um, <laughs> and, um, then I met uh, Paul Gunak through Dan and all these other guys. And then I was off. And then I, I just took off from there. So, so, uh, so then, I mean, you, gosh, you got, hooked up with uh larry hartzell so you definitely got into that organization that i know i trained you helped. yeah i was your uh beat up dummy basically for your uh private lessons yeah. um yeah. larry and then it was, uh, that was like my second coming um i had i trained for the long, longest time and then i stopped for a couple of years and um then I came, when i started coming back i was like you know i want to try something different and i'm looking and then the internet was there so it was a lot easier to access stuff and you know i see you know jkd grappling association and i just remember uh paul Vunek talking a lot about larry hartzell you know and he might larry hartzell was one guy that paul Vunek, i could honestly say when he talked about him there was almost a fear in his you know he, he had a lot of respect and i i believe almost fear of Larry wow. Hartzell. Well, that's what i that's unusual. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. For Paul Bunek, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so anyway, so I, um, you know, I, I uh, emailed and all of that, and then um, you know, I just I remember I ordered the back then they were VHS tapes. <laughs> Those all came in, and I just remember getting that big box with all the VHS tapes, and then um, I set the privates up, and then I just started training with. Uh, with C. Fuleri. And then, then I always remembered Rick Fay uh, from the old days and at seminars at Dagerberg here. And I remembered a name and I always liked him. And then I seen his huge organization and, and then everything else just kind of, you know, fall into place. And then of course. And this concludes the abbreviated version of the martial arts lifestyle podcast. Please remember to hit the like button and subscribe here to the YouTube channel. Please consider supporting the program by going to patreon.com slash malmag and subscribing for access to the full-length podcasts. Again, that is www.patreon slash M-A-L-M-A-G. Thank you for listening to this episode with Marcus Charles. And coming up next week, we have actor and martial artist Atticus Todd. Check out the Malmag store at www.martialartslifestylemagazine.com and click on the store tab. There you'll find a full selection of Timmy B's brand sticks for FMA, some Timmy B's brand shirts, and some very sharp looking Dos Manos shirts. This show is produced by Martial Arts Lifestyle Magazine. Visit us at martialartslifestylemagazine.com. Music by Jack Hal Relic. Martial Arts Lifestyle Magazine and the Martial Arts Lifestyle Podcast are trademarked and copyrighted by TNT LLC. Ah!